And we are going to start talking about the NFC North. And we'll start off with the Green Bay Packers. Good old Aaron Rodgers, always in the news, always something going on. Last year, of course, it was the draft that got Jordan Love. And this year, uh, it was draft day. Of course, Adam Schefter decides to drop his bomb and and whatnot, which uh, get get a little opinion here. What did y'all think about the fact that uh, it, all of that was just news that accumulated and he just decided to drop it that day? I think he was told by Aaron Rodgers, I want you to release this the morning of the draft. I don't think it came from Aaron Rodgers. I, I, well, okay. I bet it came from Aaron Rodgers' people. Yeah, I had to have. I think it just stewed up and you stewed up. You embarrassed me on draft Jeffrey. day last year. I'm embarrassing yeah. you. Yeah, and, you know, we're getting into this right now with this. This is like, you know, you ever tell your kid, hey, when I get when I come back in here, this room better be clean, and they just go complete F you and rip everything off the yep. walls, and it's an absolute mess? <laughs> That's what the Packers did in the first round here. So the news comes out. Look, I'm pissed. You never draft me wide receivers. Instead, you trade up and draft a quarterback in the first round last year. So I'm telling everyone, there's no way the Packers aren't taking Elijah Moore right now with this pick. There's no way they have the balls to not help Aaron Rodgers in the first round. They're like, you know what? We're ripping the sheets off the bed. We're ripping the paintings off the wall. We're taking Eric Stokes out of Georgia. And they already have a solid secondary. The uh, <laughs> defending the pass was not the Packers' problem. They can't stop the run. They can't they stop Kevin the run. King. They, 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 can't took stop a, the run. they took a quarterback. They took a corner and not even the best one available at the time. No, I don't no. understand. No, what it was a ridiculous the reach. They, so they so the Packers, just, by the way, to get through the, the whole spiel, they yes, were 13-3 sorry. and three last year. No, you're good. 13-3 and three last year. Uh, they needed offensive tackle. They needed wide receiver, linebacker, defensive tackle, and then cornerback maybe. But at 29, they take Stokes, and it is a – Massive reach. I mean, you you have this was a mid second round guy that you that you took towards the end of the first round. For no, I mean, he's he's speedy. Like you're not going to get beat over the top with him. But I don't think that you can reasonably justify this at all. It makes no, no. sense whatsoever. So round two, things a little better. Josh Myers, center out of Ohio State, wide receiver Amari Rogers out of Clemson in the third round, tackle Royce Newman out of Ole Miss in the fourth. Fifth round, they go uh, interior defensive lineman Tedderell Slayton out of uh, Florida. He was a decent pick, I guess. Uh, but all of these are basically flyers in the fifth, sixth, and seventh round. Quarterback Shamar Jean Charles out of App State. Tackle Cole Van Lannan out of Wisconsin. Linebacker Isaiah McDuffie out of Boston College. And then running back Kylan Hill out of Mississippi State. A uh, lot of stuff that they didn't particularly need, I don't guess. Like linebacker, yes. Tackle uh, Cole Van Lannan, like uh, you want to take an offensive lineman, Notre Dame and Wisconsin, those would be the spots to get them from. Uh, I just, you know, you took two quarterbacks in this draft. Why? I mean, uh, <laughs> okay. So first of all, the Packers have been frauds for the last two years. They didn't belong in the NFC Championship game in either game, and they actually came close to beating Tampa Bay if it wasn't for that missed pass interference call on the Sean Murphy bunting interception. Yep. You might be talking about. Green Bay in the Super Bowl, but this team's a fraud and they can't stop the run. They only have one weapon they can give the ball to and Devontae Adams. I don't care what people say about Aaron Jones. He's also a fraud. Sometimes he's effective in the passing game. This team, I know we weren't giving out grades. This team gets a big fat F. They failed. They failed. They failed across the board. And I love the little, hey, Amari Rogers looks like he might be a fine player, but was this a little stab as well? Like, hey, if you're going to be gone, we'll still have an A. Rodgers on this team. We'll have an A. Rod and we'll go with this young kid. I don't know what the hell this front office is thinking. It's outside of the Texans. This is the worst front office in the entire National Football League. They have been for a long time. I think the only really good move they ever made was drafting Rodgers late and signing Reggie White to like the first ever free agent deal. Other than that, this team is – their front office is complete garbage. I don't blame Aaron Rodgers for wanting to get the hell out of here. This is not a 13-3 and three team. This is just a team that played in a terrible division against weak opponents and no defenses and no quarterbacks. I just I hate what the Packers did. This is my least favorite organization. They've had the dumbest head coaches in the league since I can remember. Mike McCarthy, I know, I know that uh, Chris says Freddie Kitchens is the worst head coach. Mike McCarthy is the dumbest head coach who has ever, ever graced the sideline. The guy is an absolute moron top two bottom sorry Cowboys fans and Matt LaFleur I always think dodgeball cram it in your cram hole LaFleur because he's also a dumbass if I see Jamal Williams get 15 carries again I might blow my own damn brains out I can't stand the crap that this team does I thought they failed this draft absolute feel I, for me 
even they, though they had, what, three times more picks than the Seahawks, I think this is the worst draft in the entire league. Wow. I, I didn't think they did very good. They're up there as one of the worst for me as well. I don't like this draft. I don't understand it. Um, I, I'm with you on, on these guys. Some of these guys might end up being pretty good players. I have no idea. Uh, it, it's just a matter of this this relationship. So you, you, the analogy I got is, is this is a divorce, okay? And, and I, I guess parent A will use for politically correct reasons – bought and has like a nice sweet ass old Corvette, all right, worth some money. Parent B gets the Corvette in the in the divorce. Parent A says, screw that, I'm just setting the son of a bitch on fire. Like like mm-hmm. I'd rather <laughs> I'd rather run it over with a cement truck than let you have it. So yep. I'm just gonna burn this thing to the ground. I don't mm-hmm. I don't really know what's going on. This is why, by the way, some teams have terrible owners. All right. Some teams just have God awful owners that won't get out of the way, but at least you have somebody who's yeah. responsible, who you can stand up and point to and say, that guy's fucking it up. Okay. Mm-hmm. Or that guy's fixing it. Or, we got a problem. You can storm the Capitol and you could say, listen, well, I shouldn't use the word storm the Capitol, but like you could, you could <laughs> make, you could make a statement to an individual <laughs> and say, I'm not happy as a fan base, and we need change. We need you to do something different. And with Green Bay, you can't really do that. Like, there's not one owner. There's not one guy. It's the only one that you can point to is a Gunta. They have a CEO. And yeah, that's that's it. That's all you can do. Yep. And I I don't. I'll tell you this. The reason why I don't like it, and as I've said in some of these other videos, is I will like your draft if I can understand the strategy behind it. Right, if go. I can see, yes. it, and I don't even have to like the strategy. They, they I just have to see the path. strategy. The, their only strategy should have been kissing Aaron Rodgers' ass so he doesn't leave that organization, and they couldn't even get that right. Well, hang on, it was hang laid on. out in this. plain so black and white. Let's say you know Rodgers is gone. Let's say you believe him leaving, and you know this relationship is broken. If this is your plan for the team for life after Rodgers, this is not setting Jordan Love up for success either, my friend. No. Like, no, it's not. That, like, I'm not even saying there's a world in which they know this relationship cannot be fixed. This is a man that doesn't talk to his mother, all right? Do you think exactly. that he's going to forgive you? Like, <laughs> exactly. just, some, just some random and listen, guy that's I'll, a I'll, I'll go out of the uh, I'll go out of the parent A and parent. I'm a divorced man, and let me just tell you what. Aaron Rodgers is the wife, and he's taking half their shit. That's exactly what's oh, happening. I think he's taking been, more than half, baby. He's yeah. got alimony on top of child support. My ex-wife <laughs> even took my crock pot, and I love that yeah. damn thing. So I know exactly what's happening here. Uh, parent A and Parent B is pr- pretty damn clear what's happening here, and he's yeah. setting it on fire. And I don't blame him. Packers, yeah. god awful. Oh, it's, this, this yeah. I don't. I'm, I'm with Gary. Even if I disagree with your strategy, but I at least see what you're trying to do. Yeah. I can forgive it because I might be wrong. We have different strategies, and, and I'm not a GM. Yeah. You are, and so good luck to you. I don't even know what their strategy is. That's Apparently, a, yeah, it's it, Jordan it, Love to Marquez Valdez Scantling for seven drops a game. I don't, I don't believe him though. I mean, what a just a dreadful receiving core, dreadful so, team. So let me ask you this: So you do a lot of props and you do a lot of this stuff. Do you just blindly take all the Packers unders this year with hopes that even if Rogers plays, he's just pissed off? He's just screw it. I don't give a shit anymore. Yeah, yeah, and Aaron Rodgers is that kind of guy. You ju- you just I mean, talked I think, about it. I think there's a world in which some people say, "Oh, I want him pissed off because then he'll go out and wreck the league." Yeah, that that's what he did year. last year. Yeah, or he could that's just empty la- the bank account on his way out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, this, this year he's got Jeopardy, and he loves that host in the Jeopardy. I'm telling you right now, it will not shock me. He's like, you know what? Fuck you guys. I'm going to host Jeopardy for a year. I don't I'm know Carson. that he's going to be the host of Jeopardy. He should be. I love it. Yeah. Absolutely I mean, love you it. You love Same it, here. but I don't know that the people who actually pay the bills at Jeopardy love it. Yeah, we'll, yeah there we'll you see. Go. <laughs> Who knows? I, did y'all see he's going to be on like the uh, the Connors or whatever this week, like the uh, oh the Roseanne God. spinoff thing, whatever. Like, but he's <laughs> he's so on it you. as the host of Jeopardy. Like it's <laughs> yeah, it's I'm really weird. You, he loves oh, the Jeopardy thing. That's like that show's like based out of Chicago, and so I wonder yeah. how they're going to like fit that in because they're supposed oh, yeah. to hate him because they're big Bears fans. Yep, we shall God see. Is, we shall see. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.